Hi everyone, welcome to ETTV. I'm Bill Burt. Uh, we're here, post-mortem here, at the Eagle Tribune. I'm with Mark Dennehy, head hockey coach at Merrimack College. You might be sick of reading and seeing Mark. You've seen a lot of him lately. I'm joking, not sick, because uh, it was a really, a really nice run and a nice story, uh, not only around the country, but sp specifically around here. Particularly, we saw the crowds there and all the interest we had. Mark, thanks for coming in. And uh, briefly, what uh, what are your feelings a couple of days after it's uh, it's over? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. And uh, I can understand if people are sick. Uh, a number of my <laughs> neighbors, uh, my mother's almost fed up of reading about us. So, um, you, you know what? It's the first probably 24 hours. It was, it was just numb. You know, it's hard. You you put so much into it, and and more so the players than than anybody else. And to have it end so succinctly and, and so abruptly, uh, you know, it's like hacking off a limb. But um, when I when I woke up uh, and, and came out of the fog a little bit, uh, it's right to next year. And that's not putting this past season and what our players have done, and it's not putting that aside. It's it's my job is to is to move forward, and, and it's also the best part of my job. You know, uh, we're undefeated again in in 11, 12, and uh, we want to stay that way. Uh, and so, you know, as the caretaker of the program, I've got to think about moving forward. And I've also got to help some of our players, whether it's Stefan DaCosta, who's going through the process right now with the NHL teams, or um, some of our seniors who are going to have opportunities. Uh, I've got to start helping them move forward. And uh, it's not about forgetting what we've done. We'll have time to, to reflect on that. We're in the process of scheduling our banquet and, and honoring the seniors. But... Um, I think it is important to, to capitalize on this momentum and, and take it into next year. I do want to get into this past weekend, but I first want to talk about, I know from afar it looked like um, this was a Cinderella story this year. Merrimack comes out of nowhere uh, to become a national powerhouse, per se. Yet, you know it, it wasn't overnight. Uh, we look at last year. I mean, last year really was 16-19-2, uh, and two, I think it was in the league. You push BU to three games, a very good BU team. And uh, that this has been building, not again, out of, uh, not three, four, five, six ranked in the country, but building towards something better. And we saw that this year. Uh, briefly tell me about that. Yeah, it's funny. I was thinking about this this morning, you know, we're, we're the, the, the five-year overnight success. <laughs> um, you can go back two years to when we led the country in one goal games mm -hmm. and, and in the dubious honor of one goal losses as well and say, well, geez, we started to see some things there. Um, you know, there were times when, you know, I've got my list of 100 things that we want to do and I had to have to go back to it and look at it just to make sure we were making progress. You know, the, the, there were times when it was like an iceberg. You weren't sure if it was really moving, but if you paid attention and marked, <laughs> set out markers, you'd realize that we were making progress. Um, it is a result-oriented business, and so at the end of the day, it's about wins and losses. But as a coach, uh, you look at some of the underlying trends, and, and you know we were pretty confident that, that we were moving in the right direction. Last year was definitely um, a, a, a jolt for us. Um, you know, we came into this season, uh, you know, really believing that we had a good team from day one, uh, and you know success breeds success as we started to win and started to have some of those successes I think belief uh, grew you know we talked about even at the beginning of the year that you know there are programs in our in our league that that have success woven into the fabric of their jerseys well there were successful programs in Merrimack's past whether it's 78 or 88 or 98 97 team was a heck of a team you know those fibers were still in that jersey and it was just a matter of of sort of multiplying them and so with every victory, with every uh, uh, win, you could see you know, more and more pride being woven into those jerseys. And uh, one of the things we talked about at the end of the year as, as we were preparing for a game was you know, that MC crest means something again. Now. And it may mean more than it's ever meant. And um, you know, that's the legacy that this senior class will leave is you know, when our freshmen come in and that jersey's hung up in their locker, it's going to act for them like it acts for some other freshmen in the league to put on other jerseys you know you, sometimes you, you take an average player and put a BU jersey on him and he plays like Superman because mm -hmm. it's like his cape well that Merrimack crest is going to mean uh, you know something like that as well and and it's because of the hard work of of not just the seniors but the entire program if I had to ask you uh, what was the difference between being a good team this year to being a very good team which you guys really were 
arguably one of the better teams in the country. Was it, uh, I know we looked at Acosta and we looked at Canada and it, everything starts at the goaltending. From my vantage point, it just seems like you had, by the end of the year, three lines playing like a first line. And, and we saw it against Notre Dame even in the final uh, in, in your last game. Uh, you, you, you had depth on this team that we'd probably never, had never seen at the Division One level. We did, we had a lot of depth. And, um, but, but I think overall, you don't win without good players, and we had good players. Mm -hmm. We have good players. Um, you know, Stefan DaCosta would be the first one to tell you that he had, he walked into a pretty good team that was kind of on its upswing when he came in mm -hmm. here last year. Um, you know, Joe Canato was the guy we thought he'd be. Um, but I think really what happened was guys started to believe. And it seems like a very simple thing or, you know, uh, maybe even, uh, you, know, uh, you know, you can poo-poo it and say, well, what does that mean? It, it's tangible. You know, people ask me all the time, going, leading into a game, you know, how are you going to do tonight? My, my answer is always, I'll let you know after the second period. And what I mean by that is the best teams I've ever been around, um, you know, when you're going out for that third period, whether you're up a goal, down a goal, tied, whatever the situation is, you feel from your team as to whether they believe they're going to win or not. And I've been a part of teams that there were a couple doubts, and those proved right. And I've been a part of teams that no matter what the situation was, in their heart of hearts, they just believed they were going to win. And they figured out a way to get it done. So um, that, that has really grown this year with this program. And, uh, you know, that's something that the, the returning players will, will have in their, in their, mental, uh, in their mental database to, to be able to draw on going down the road. Let's go to Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, for a while there, it looked like, and this is we're talking about the 4-3 the loss in overtime to Notre Dame. For a while there in the first period, even parts of the second, uh, I don't want to say Merrimack looked as good as it's ever looked, but uh, you guys look solid, you're making plays, uh, and it got 3-1 to one at one point, and, and then they had that one shot, hit Joe's glove, I think hit the post and went in, and then sort of things changed from there. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me a little bit from your perspective about that game. Well, you know, and I think Jeff Jackson said it, if we get that three-goal lead, um, you know, it, it might have changed. And mm -hmm. I believe Jeff Aleka had a breakaway up 3-1, um, and he's been, he's been money on those all year long. If we, and, and the goalie just made a nice save on him. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we didn't handle the ebb and flow of the game the mm -hmm. way we needed to. So uh, hockey's a game of momentum. We talk about not getting too high with the highs, not getting too low with the lows. I think when that second goal went in, um, we didn't handle it as well as we should have. And, and at the end of the day, that falls on me. You know, uh, I look back and I've watched the third period. I've watched the whole game once. Um, you know, I, I need to sit back and watch the third period and really kind of dissect what changes we'd make. We had um, TV timeouts. But there really wasn't much stoppage in play in the third period. If you look at it, we actually had to take back-to-back -back TV timeouts at like the four-minute mark and the 3.30 mark because there weren't any whistles. Mm -hmm. So uh, the play had continued. Add to that fact, we took two penalties uh, in the last 10 minutes of the game. That sways momentum as well. Um, you know, but I'd like to see what opportunities we had to, to shift the momentum. The momentum obviously shifted after the third period. I mean, we were able to get in that locker room and regroup, and um, one of the things we talked about was just attacking. Like, that's, our, that's been our mantra all mm -hmm. year long. Uh, you, know, you know me, where I grew up, and, and, you know, I tell people all the time, you grew up in Dorchester, uh, you either better be tough or you better be quick, and I wasn't tough. But, but you know when you do get in a fight, you got your best chance of winning if you throw the first punch. So we, we came out in that overtime, and, and we took a couple cuts, and, um, you know, I think that's what I'm proudest of. I know we, uh, the term has been used fluky a, a lot talking about that game. Forget about the goal that, that gave Notre Dame the win. You had two or three opportunities where guys were in front of the net. It looked like a legitimate where the puck sort of bounced wrong, over sticks. Where, I mean, that was a dominant uh, five minutes for you guys in overtime. Yeah, it was. I mean, we had, we had a lot of looks, mm -hmm. you know. Um, usually these games end early or late. I mean, that's sort of the nature mm -hmm. of it uh, in terms of my experience. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we were ready for those for those first couple shifts, and we were. I mean, we got after pretty good. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they were able to capitalize on their mm -hmm. opportunities. We didn't capitalize on ours. That's hockey. Uh, you know, we've gotten plenty of bounces throughout the year that that um, we may have chalked up to skill level uh, and not to, to to luck. You make your own luck. Um, I think Notre Dame proved themselves to be a pretty good team by by following that up with a victory over over the University of New Hampshire in New Hampshire. Um, you know, as a coach, you want to make sure that your guys empty the tank, which I thought we did. Um, I thought we played well 
longer than we than we didn't mm -hmm. in that game. Uh, sometimes you can do that and not win. It, it's if you it, again, that's why if you concentrate on the process, you're gonna have more success than than. Uh, than failure, but it doesn't guarantee success. He's Mark Dennehy. I'm Bill Burt. That wraps up our first segment. Uh, segment two, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, next year, beyond, and a couple of players and where they're going. We'll be right back. <laughs>